and her sixth husband of seven marriages, were having such a good time in Israel that they extended the visit until Saturday, did some sightseeing and met with Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. In Israel, we had sent our cameras to the home of this marvelous woman. Ladies and gentlemen, the former Prime Minister of the State of Israel, Golda Meir. I had a cocktail party. A Kabbalah cocktail party? Kabbalah. Kabbalah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, Kabbalah if you're Israeli, I guess. Mm -hmm. now, how did you become involved in this? Um, a girlfriend of mine, she kept telling me about this really charismatic um, rabbi named Eitan who said, told these great stories and, you know, and I said, listen, I'm, Susan, I'm not even Jewish. Why are you telling me these things? And I guess from a Palestinian perspective, say, why are we shown as the rape? If you ask the UN, they have ample evidence of Palestinians and Lebanese being raped, sodom by Israeli uh, jailers. Mm -hmm. Why the Palestinian was presented as the rape? Um, is it more palatable to see a Palestinian raping than an Israeli? Hardcore jihadis right here in Germany. They're a threat to both countries. means in English flying on you <laughs> and basically when you say uh, when you say afa uh, it means that I love you so much and afa so and afa From the second Israel was created, Israeli government officials and those sympathetic with the new state immediately set about looking for ways to depict the new state, Israel, in a way that would resonate with Western audiences. An epic of our time, the birth of a nation, with Paul Newman as Ari ben Canaan, Eva Marie Saint as Kitty Fremont. To depict Israel as a liberal democracy that's under attack from its neighboring savages. Time magazine says, a terrific show. You heard what I said! Fight! Not beg! Fight! And what better tool to project that image other than Hollywood, the entertainment capital of the world? Because when you watch entertainment, you're not on high alert. You're relaxed, you're enjoying. So you don't realize you're being spoon-fed propaganda the way you would when you're watching the news. And this usage of Hollywood to hide the propaganda behind fairy tales about Israel started in 1948. When Israel was created, the creation of Israel was celebrated by 24,000 people gathered at the Hollywood Bowl to salute the new state of Israel. They listened to a recorded message from the Prime Minister, then Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, as a huge flag emblazoned with the Star of David shone down on them. And over the course of the next 76 years, until today, a staggering number of Hollywood stars support Israel. And if you analyze the way Hollywood builds Israel up, it's always dependent on putting Palestine down. What about the civilian casualty rate? Civilian, though? then don't put your goddamn things in private homes. And then we say, get out. Of, of course, we're going to do it. The response normally is, where are, the, where are the civilians supposed to go? I don't care. They started it. It is, you're all insane. It's like the only way they can praise Israel is by demonizing Palestinians. Like, it doesn't exist without having an enemy. Selena Gomez tweeted uh, a pro-Gaza. Oh, yeah. let's see if she can spell Palestinian. And that messaging is most effective when it's done subliminally. In movies and TV shows that are not related to war. In comedies, in light-hearted stuff. Because again, propaganda works best when you don't suspect that you're being propagandized into doing something or believing something. Take, for example, those satire mockumentary movies by Sasha Baron Cohen who, by the way, is a hardcore Zionist, with strong ties to Israel's national security state. Let's take a look at his movie, Bruno. There was still one shithole left to fix. My plan was to get both sides to sign a peace deal. Bruno was supposed to be about exploring the world of homophobia. And of course, naturally, Sasha wanted to explore homophobia in the radical Islamic Middle East. Because when you're trying to occupy, I mean, <laughs> liberate, liberate, that's what they're trying to do. I love your hat. So naturally, when Sasha was casting characters for his film Bruno, he consulted with his casting director, the CIA. I shit you not. He said this on Letterman. You know, when we were making this film, we wanted it to be better than Borat, and we thought 
what could people see that they'd never seen before on film? And we thought one thing would be a comedian interviewing a terrorist. Mm -hmm. So we showed the script, you know, the, the outline of the script to the studio, and they said, oh, this is great, who's going to play the terrorist? And we said, no, we're going to find a real terrorist. <laughs> now, it's not that easy to find an actual terrorist. There's no Craigslist in Beirut, for example. <laughs> so we called up a contact we had at the CIA and said, uh, can you help us? We're looking to find a terrorist. Bruno, Bruno has a contact at the CIA. <laughs> Bruno doesn't, but I knew somebody who did. All right. And the CIA then found him a Palestinian that they labeled as a terrorist to use as a character in his movie about homophobia. Al-Qaeda of 2001. What I find very interesting is this direct casual access of a filmmaker to the CIA. But can you imagine I call the CIA as a filmmaker wanting them to help me research something? What the fuck? As if the CIA exists to improve storytelling around the world. Yeah, that's why they're doing it. They're consulting with him on character development and pacing and story structure. The fact that you're working with the CIA for your movie... <laughs> And later on, we're going to talk about how Hollywood promotes the war on behalf of the U.S. security apparatus, the CIA, the Pentagon, and the NSA. But for now, let's get back to this racist masquerading as a comedian. Can I give you guys a word of advice? Lose the beards, because your King Osama looks like a kind of dirty wizard or a homeless Santa. <laughs> By the way, journalist Alan McLeod found out who the CIA agent that helped Sasha find the character, the Palestinian character for his film. And that CIA agent turned whistleblower, his name is John Kiriakou. John that said that eventually Sasha was actually interviewing a Palestinian NGO worker that they claimed is a terrorist. Within a few hundred yards of Israeli soldiers walks a Palestinian branded a major terrorist by the Bruno film. We found somebody who actually lived in a town that had a terrorist from a, a pretty nasty group called the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade. Ayman Abu Eta not only lives openly, but frequently travels abroad. It took our producer, Samir Bazbaz, two phone calls and ten minutes to find someone the film sets up as a man in hiding. Is your number in the phone book? Your yeah. telephone? Yeah. I thought I needed some security to get to the right. terrorist. The guy picks this secret location. This was the location the Everest Hotel. Ayman Abu Aita is in the Fatah party. The film fails to identify him as a Christian when the character Bruno asks him about the Muslim Osama bin Laden. And this poor guy lost his job because of the portrayal of him as a monster in the film. And later, by the way, he sued for nine figures, which they settled out of court with him. And you know when people settle out of court, that means they want... And it's an admittance of guilt. But the most fascinating and twisted part of that story is what didn't make the cut in the film. You know, Sacha Baron Cohen's mockumentary films is where he's playing a character, but none of the people that he's talking to know that it's a character. So it's filmed like a documentary, but he's acting, but everyone else thinks it's real. So in this movie, Bruno, he goes around being his most camp self, and kind of like trying to trigger a homophobic reaction out of people. And they filmed in Jerusalem. And John, that ex-CIA agent, said that there was one scene they filmed in Jerusalem where Bruno was acting camp. Now, normally Israel is presented as a gay haven, right? But while filming, Sasha was chased down by a group of homophobic Israelis who wanted to lynch him. And according to the ex-CIA agent, this was the first time that Sasha broke character while filming. He was begging them, talking to them in Hebrew, saying, I'm playing a character, this is not me. And they still wouldn't let him go. They chased him down, he found a shop, and he hid in the toilet to avoid being beaten up by these guys. This is Israel, the gay haven. So if Sasha wanted to make a film that explores homophobia, wouldn't this footage be gold? Like it's documentary gold, you got the most homophobic reaction. But that wasn't included in the film because it doesn't fit the narrative that Hollywood tries to paint about Israel. Israel can never be the butt of the joke. It has to be Palestinians. Uh, we...